everyone. It is so nice to look out and see a full house this evening for our Lights of Love ceremony. So welcome to our 19th annual Lights of Love tree lighting ceremony. I'm Tracy Rebel, the Executive Director with the Blue Ridge Healthcare Foundation. And we are excited that you have joined us this evening. And we also want to extend a thank you to everyone who supported this event this year and throughout the years that we have held it. So at this time, I'd like to ask Reverend Dr. Kari Edwards of the Abernathy Memorial United Methodist Church to provide our invocation. If you'll pray with me. God of us all, tonight we come reflecting on those that we hold dear to our hearts. Those people that have been lost due to the verdict of cancer those that have been given the words of cancer spoken over them, and those that tirelessly fight to save those that have been diagnosed with cancer. God, this is a season of darkness, a season of cold, yet you are a God of life and light. And so this Advent season, we come preparing for the light to come and shine into our lives and so tonight we pray that you shine down your lights of love upon us awakening us and bringing healing to this world we pray all of these things in the redeemer sustainer and creator father son and holy spirit amen, amen. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Dr. Edwards, for a beautiful invocation. So I'd like to now introduce Mandy Taylor, who is the Executive Director of Oncology and Pharmacy Services. Good evening. Lots of Love raises money to support the UNC Health Blue Ridge Cancer Center and our patients. The culmination of Lots of Love is our ceremony this evening. Tonight provides us an opportunity to honor and remember loved ones and special people in our lives, especially those who have fought cancer and survived, and those who have sadly lost their lives to this disease. We will honor and remember these individuals tonight through the lighting of our tree. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Kathy Bailey, President and CEO of UNC Health Blue Ridge. Thank you, Mandy, and good evening. Welcome to the 19th Annual Lights of Love, where we pay tribute to our loved ones, either in memory or in honor through the lighting of this tree. Your donation of a light helps us provide care for our cancer patients, but more importantly, the light helps our patients realize there is hope beyond the darkness. As we light the tree tonight, let it serve as a reminder that we are here to bring new life into the world to preserve and regenerate life, and to make life for our patients as comfortable and dignified as possible. The lights on the tree serve as a reminder of those that have gone before us, and we remember them with love, and they serve as a reminder of those that are still here with us that we honor with love. As I look at the lights, I think of the star of Bethlehem on a long ago night. That star, that light, heralded joy, peace, and hope. The lights today send the same message to our patients, joy in their lives, peace in their hearts, and hope beyond the darkness. Thank you. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let her Hills and plains. Repeat the sound. Repeat. 
Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat the sound. Repeat. Repeat the sound in joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations grow. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey, for your remarks, and thank you to the chamber singers of Jimmy C. Drawn High School. They did a great job, so thank you all. I'd like to now invite Dr. Greg Jones, radiation oncologist for UNC Health Blue Ridge Cancer Center, and one of our North Star sponsors for Lights of Love to say a few words about what the new cancer center will mean to our community. <coughs> The Lights of Love is celebrated at Christmas for a real good reason. Jesus is the one that told us to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love others as an extension of ourselves as if they're part of us. We are all one, and that's how we take care of our patients at the Cancer Center. The concept of a united Cancer Center where radiation oncology, medical oncology, and in some, uh, some communities, other uh, things like surgical oncology would all be together became very popular in the 1980s. And in 1991, Valdez Hospital took the first step in this region to have a unified cancer center. But multiple forces after that fragmented it a bit. And it wasn't until later in the 1990s when my department fell under the leadership of Miss Kathy Bailey that we began to bring that back together. I owe her a lot for her forethought and willingness to work with us to do that. Now, it took a lot of years to do that, but more recently, we have become a consolidated cancer center. But soon, we'll take the next step toward improved consolidation, and it won't just be uh, still, we're a little fragmented now. At that, at that point in time, we'll all be under one roof. We'll have an extraordinarily well-equipped department with a well-developed support staff and ancillary services, and everybody will be in the same little place over there. And I think that that plus the latest technology uh, will enable us to do all relatively common modalities right here at Valdez. This will greatly eliminate the need to send people elsewhere for some of the treatments that we still have to do right now. This will benefit individual patients, it will benefit the community at large, and it will improve the ability to provide interdisciplinary care. The Cancer Center will be designed and equipped in such a way that it will enhance the, cap enhance the capability of an already dedicated and extraordinarily inspired team. It's not going to be just a cancer center similar to the cancer centers that the big cities have. It's going to have a caring, loving, compassionate team in a wonderful environment. It's going to be far superior to what you see in big cities because we'll be able to provide individualized, outstanding care beyond compare. Now I could give you more details, but not in my allotted time. <laughs> You'll have to speak to me individually on, on, on for that. But I do want to introduce a, a valued new member of our support services and team right now. Uh, Dory Martin is our patient financial navigator, and she's going to share a few of those details. Thanks. The cancer journey for each patient is unique and different. Here at UNC Health Blue Ridge Cancer Center, we want to ensure that we are providing holistic approaches to the patient during this journey. This includes uncovering ways to evaluate care and meet the patient where they are. 
This may include items like the Clarity Mask. And what this does is it assists in positioning and maintaining the patient's head and shoulders so they can receive accurate treatment. It's kind of scary, I know. <laughs> Some other examples we, we can do medication copay assistance and gas vouchers can be offered. These examples provide a glimpse of how your generous gifts during lots of love are used to impact others. Our Cancer Center teammates see daily how your gifts make a difference and Samantha Loudermilk, oncology nurse, wants to provide a story that has been meaningful to our team. Good evening. Today, we remember and celebrate the life of a very special lady, India Rutherford. India was special to each one of us and she held a very special place in our hearts. To know India was to feel love and joy on a daily basis. She was always positive and had a smile on her face, even through her entire journey of cancer. She was a fierce lover and selfless individual. She was a light to all she was around. In her presence, you could just feel the love of Jesus. India was strong in her faith and she never wavered, even through her journey. She was always sharing the love of Jesus with everybody, everywhere she went. I encourage each of you here today to carry on the life of India by sharing the love of Jesus with others everywhere you go and by wearing a contagious smile like she always did. While we always strive to give the best care to India, as we do for all of our patients, India gave more to us than we could have ever gave to her. At this time, I would like to ask India's family to please stand. And our thoughts. And I know that India's love will always be with you and be your guide. Thank you. Thank you, Tori and Samantha, for sharing the impact on giving to our patients. And thank you to the India Rutherford family for being with us this evening and allowing us to celebrate a life that certainly seemed very well lived. I would like to take a moment to thank all of our sponsors this year which are noted on the back of your program. So certainly please take a look at that. And I would like to especially um, thank our North Star sponsors, Mr. Mike and Charlie Bridges, and Dr. Greg and Robin Jones. So let's give all of our sponsors a round of applause, please. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Mike Bridges, Chairman of the UNC Health Blue Ridge Board of Directors and one of our North Star sponsors to share a few remarks. Thank you, Tracy. Um, and again, I appreciate the story about uh, uh, India. It's uh, heartwarming. Uh, I, you know, as I look out, I'd like to add my thanks to the beautiful music that has been provided by the Drawn Chamber Singers, directed by Ashley Sigmund, and also Sarah Black on the violin and Mara Miller on the flute. All of you had added so much to this occasion. As I look out at those present, I would bet that virtually everyone in here <clears throat> has been touched one way or the other by cancer. They may not have had it themselves, but an immediate family member, a close relative, a friend, or acquaintance has. This is a disease that doesn't affect just the patient, but affects everyone around them, especially the immediate caregivers. My wife Charlie and I are not exceptions. We have lost grandparents, a father, several close friends, and even a spouse. We are fortunate to have friends that are survivors. We are fortunate to have many friends that are survivors. My own sister, Charlotte Ann Duncan, who is here tonight with her husband, uh, Reverend C.R. Richard Duncan, is a victim and a survivor. 
knowing what cancer does to both patients and families has led them to be supporters of the Lights of Love. Charlie and I are particularly fond of the Lights of Love campaign because all, 100% of the money that is raised goes to assist the patients or immediate caregivers and many examples you've heard already tonight. I would like to remind everyone that even though our tree lighting is once a year in celebration of the Christmas season, you can contribute to the UNC uh, Blue Ridge Foundation Cancer Center Fund all year long. All you have to do is make it out to the foundation in the, in the memo, make sure it's the, uh, the uh, Lights of Love campaign and Tracy will make sure it gets into the right account and it's used appropriately. At this time, I would like to invite our other North Star sponsors. Uh, I, I noticed that uh, it's Dr. Jones, please, and his wife Robin, as uh, my wife Charlie, neither are here today. So if you would join me, please. Uh, and also uh, the family of Ida Rutherford. We're going to walk over to this window right here and go through the lighting of the tree. so much for being here tonight and helping us to celebrate the Lights of Love campaign and wish for all of you a very, very Merry Christmas.
Thank you to everyone who provided remarks this evening. And thank you also again to the drawn chamber singers, Sarah Black on violin and Mara Miller on flute. Thank you all for sharing your talents and gifts with us this evening. It was truly beautiful. <coughs> I would like to note that the Lights of Love tree that you do see outside was donated by the Carpenter Decorating Company in memory of their former employee, Michelle Donna Presley. And on behalf of UNC Health Blue Ridge and the Blue Ridge Healthcare Foundation, thank you all for attending this special evening. As a parting gift, we have some delicious cookies for you. So please take one as you leave this evening. And thank you again for attending and supporting Lights of Love. And we hope you all have a wonderful, beautiful, and safe holiday season. Thank you.